welcome to Baguio, north of Luzon Island here in the Philippines. Luzon's the main island uh, that Manila's on and I was in Manila and it was way too hot. So I have retreated to Baguio where the people are just as friendly if not friendlier and we are 1500 meters up in the mountains and ready for an epic ride. Lots of lovely traffic even here in the mountains big old city bag here now i wanted to go straight on but it seems straight on isn't an option so we go with the flow must be a bit of a one-way system quickest way to get around of course is always on a bicycle going past the Baguio Botanical Gardens which looked very nice from a quick glimpse so uh, I'll have to come up here for a visit not with my bicycle so we've gone from Muslim country Hindu country now Catholic country still got the jeepneys here Up and up we go. Nice little view down onto one of the big cathedrals. But we're climbing up and up through the pine trees. <coughs> Baguio dotted with pine trees, pine tree forest. Houses just dotted over the hillside. As is often the case with these hill towns. Baguio was apparently developed or shall we say, utilised as a hill station by the uh, Americans taking a leaf out of the British book we know a thing or two about hill stations after sweltering in the Indian heat but yeah, much much cooler up here although interestingly the locals are all complaining that it's way too hot <laughs> Okay, I've been climbing for 274 meters up now, so we get a nice view back over Baguio. Well, over part of Baguio. That's uh, just a little bit of it. You can maybe just see it through the trees, just completely carpeting the hillside. It is a big old city. I will check the population for you. And stick it on the screen below. Yeah, just sort of sprawling away, dotted across the, the hillside in a ramshackle but rather appealing manner. I do like hills, hill towns like this. It's very reminiscent to me of uh, Dalat in Vietnam. Uh, big tourist destination for the Filipinos. I have seen one foreigner since I arrived two or three days ago, which I like. And Dalat was very similar. Dalat was uh, very much a Vietnamese tourist destination and not particularly well known by foreigners. Lots of pine trees, lots of lovely climbs, big descents. Yeah, definitely some similarities. And now we've done all that climbing, we're going to go all the way back down. Up and down I think will be the order of the day. Not much flat. Definitely getting away from the traffic a bit now. Though with a population this size and the sort of access point to the whole mountain region of the north, I think it's always going to be a little bit busy up here. Very hazy out. Still very pretty though. Into this lovely valley. Some farm terracing on the very steep slopes. Pine trees, a few houses and this road just sort of perched precariously on the side of the mountain. So, on today's ride brings you the Ambu Cloud Dam Loop. 66 kilometers long. Wait a minute, I thought you said this was an epic ride. Hold your horses, people. 66 kilometers long, two and a half thousand meters of climbing. Uh, for those that don't know, two and a half thousand meters of climbing is a lot 
anyway. Two and a half thousand meters and 66 kilometers is a heck of a lot. That's sort of verging on three and a half thousand per hundred kilometers. And that's a lot. There are only two directions on this ride, up and down. And I think the whole loop will be up and down, but I've been told it's very pretty. The dam itself is supposed to be a bit of a sight. And I'm really looking forward to it. There's nothing better than a, a first proper ride in a new location where you have uh, just no expectations. Don't know what's coming, just find out. Views are opening up. I think it was in the last video in Manila that I was saying I uh, I don't make any plans or I don't make many plans when I'm visiting a new country because I need to see the conditions when I get there and this is the perfect example I mean I did have some loose plans to go traveling to other islands further south and explore uh, Philippines as I'm sure you know is a big archipelago I'll check the number of islands stick it down below for you but I suspect it's quite a lot yeah experienced the oven like conditions of Manila came up to Baguio 1500 meters up and now I think I'm just gonna stay here <laughs> very simple little dwellings <laughs> a ginger cat lots of cats here not quite as many as Manila. Manila, I don't think I've ever seen quite so many cats in my life. A lot of very tough street cats. Yeah, I can see... I'll stay in Baguio for a few more days. I've got a cool place to stay. It's like a hostel that my friend Carl put me onto. He was here like a year ago. Back over. It's a hostel, so it's dorms, but uh, like capsule style. So you've got you've really got your own private space and it's got a... Uh, it's got everything you need really. I can make breakfast, got a fridge, a kettle, uh, shops nearby and at least two decent veggie restaurants. <laughs> Yeah, so a few days in Baguio, then I've got a 500 kilometer bike pack tour that someone sent me through the mountains here. Uh, it does descend to sea level at at least one point, maybe two, so that will mean a bit of heat and some big climbs, but it does look fantastic. Uh, a couple of the towns on the way, I've been told, would be very nice for an hour for sort of a rest day, so I'll probably stretch that out to a week or so. And then by the time I've got back to Baguio, I suspect it'll just be a few days before I head back to Manila and all the way home. Pine tree descent in the shade, very nice. It is ooh, 25, 26 degrees, very lovely. As I say, locals are complaining that it's too hot. I think it's hotter than it should normally be and it should apparently be the rainy season. Uh, and again, And again, very like the light, rainy season coming, similar time of year, when it starts getting very hot down on the plains, that hot air builds and builds and builds and then sort of rises up in the afternoon and turns to precipitation in the mountains. Exactly the same in the light. Beautiful clear mornings, but you had to be home by midday because that was when the rains could come. And when it rained, boy did it rain. Subsidence, subsidence there, road slipping away. Still descending. Not a lot of traffic now we're away from Baguio, I have to say. Very different from my Manila experience. <laughs> I mean, I was out of town within a few kilometers here. Unlike the 35 kilometers to get out of Manila. And even then, I wasn't really out of town.
long descent now, all the way down there. See the road snaking down. We're going to drop down to about, I think, 700 meters. Uh, yeah, so Baggio was at 1500. We're going to drop all the way down to about seven and then climb all the way up to 1700. Nice thousand meter climb, a little bit more actually, I think, more like 1100. That would be the main climb of the day, but not the only one. Road surfaces are excellent, I have to say. There was a crunchy bit in town for 100 meters or so, but often is the case that in town the roads are not so good. But here, surfaces have been very good, very smooth, very road bike friendly. Still descending. Down to, where are we doing to? Ah, I think that's it. So yeah, computer says climb coming. Short one to start with, just a couple of K. Then it drops back down again, and then the big one. But very different from big climbs I've been doing elsewhere in that it's not very hot and not very sweaty. I've got a couple of water bottles with me, so I should be fine for water. I haven't got any food, but there's plenty of little shops and that along the way. Break, bottle of coke, bag of peanuts, 55 pesos, about 75, 80 p. Uh, big climb coming, probably not the best time to stop, but it was here. Cicadas. Well, there's a couple of bridges here, I think. I don't know if I want to take this one. Let's have a look. Ooh, no, that's rideable, I'd say. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. I'm not going to ride across it. I think there's a, yeah, there's a real bridge up ahead. Looks a little bit precarious. Yeah, that's about as far as I'm going to walk across it. <laughs> Over the real bridge. Stop and have a look downstream. Well, I say downstream, and there ain't much of a stream. I suspect the Ambu Cloud Dam has put paid for that. Yeah, just a tiny little river in this big valley. Interesting views. Caution, landslide prone area. You see this netting that's been put up to offer some protection. We're heading back down again, ready for the big climb, which my computer tells me it is 15 kilometers. A couple of steep parts and a couple of easier parts, but probably going to be a good hour or so going uphill. So we're away from the pine trees now, we're in sort of eucalyptus country. I tend to find that pine trees will grow sort of about 11, 1200 meters up, then you're into pine tree zone. In better days. Mangoes are growing. Still got away though. Into the climb. Very steep to start with. 18%. I think that'll settle down in a minute get easier for a while and then looks like the second half is a lot steeper. A little bit warm down here. It's only 700 meters altitude. 1,242 meters to be climbed apparently. A little bit more than I thought. 
Okay, very hazy out, but there's the dam. We're not actually riding down to it, we're just riding up the climb next to it, but that's, and you can see there's a body of water, big lake inside, so, yeah, I'm guessing that's the Ember Cloud Dam, and that's probably as close as we're gonna get, because we're going straight up there. idea what mama is but I won't be spitting any little roadside eateries I don't think I shall be availing myself of the their wares a thousand meters up now starting to feel a little bit fresher the air I mean, still toasty, but not, not too hot, not too sweaty. Uh, still got a bottle and a bit of water. Definitely a bit out there now, now though. There's no shops or anything. I um, think we'll probably have to do a few more kilometers before we can resupply, but I'll be fine. Getting back into the pine trees as well. Hardly any traffic. Road still very good, except where there's been landslides and then, not surprisingly, roads were a bit damaged. And it looks like a big landslide region, this. Though, that danger, of course, mostly during the rains. Fourteen hundred metres up now. A little bit sweaty, but quite bearable. Another 500 still to climb, so we're going to get up to near 2,000, I'd say. Got a little bit of slipping going on in my gears. I tried to sort that out yesterday and failed, so it'll be a trip to the bike shop at some point. I do know where there is one with a mechanic. We'll see what he's like. Yeah, so steepest part of the climb yet to come, but we'll be quite a bit higher by then, so I should have cooled off. And then we can stop for a cold drink. All changed suddenly. Got a bit confused with the route. Uh, and then discovered it just took this track very steeply up off the main road. Looked like we could have continued on the main road, but I'm following the route I was sent. And you know, when you get these twin cement tracks like this it's steep uh, how steep steep <laughs> looks like there's been a fire here for as far some time ago though I think under the trees though it's nicer than being on the main road definitely a bit cooler it's about another kilometer of this and then we're I think we rejoin the main road. It certainly looks like it gets a bit easier. Nearly at the top. Queues opening up. Another 100 metres of ascent to do. But it should be less steep now. That was a tough pit. It's not the end of the climbing for the ride, but it's most of it done and it'll be the end of this big one. Okay, some real gravel. Well, dirt. <laughs> dirt and then gravel. And the guy who gave me this route, I thought he was a roadie, but I'm not sure I'd want to have done this section. Well, certainly not this bit, but even the previous bit on the road bike. Uh, but maybe not, maybe I just assumed he was, and he was, I know he was touring, so maybe he was on a mountain bike. There's a surprising number of cyclists in Baguio, considering how hilly it is. And I have to say, most of them are on mountain bikes of some sort. But I know there are some roadies here. Hopefully I'll bump into them. They did, I did get an invite for a Saturday morning group ride at 5am. Why roadies have to be so masochistic? <laughs> it's not hot. 
you don't need to go out at 5 a.m. It's not like being in Manila or Java, but roadies do like to punish themselves even more than just climbing up long steep climbs. Mountain bikers, very different story. Final ramp, very steep, 20%, a few hundred meters of this, and then we should be done. Whew. Certainly feeling this. Oh, clouding over. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we're at the top. We are nearly 1800 meters up. It's the highest I've been so far. Looks like some sort of maybe a strawberry farm down there. I'm very low on water, down to my last few sips, so I need to replenish and soon. And into a little town. Hopefully there's some sort of store, convenience store here. That looks like... No, that sort of uh, hardware store. Looking for a, a little shop, but I need one with a fridge. <laughs> I want a cold drink. Hmm, not a lot happening. Keep going. Okay, we're about 50k in, still some climbing to do. Progress is very slow, we're averaging about 15 kilometers an hour, which is slow, but it's basically been all climbing. Anyway, I got a nice bright blue Gatorade. I'm going to eat my peanuts, get a bottle of water as well, and then we'll continue. It's only another 20k, but still a bit more climbing. I'm guessing the uh, interior of the bus was full, so that's the last space. The guy's just hanging off the back of it. getting a lot busier now last stretch about 10 or 11k we're passing through I think this is like Trinidad town of which is sort of north of Baguio and yeah definitely a lot more trucks and whatever everything going on but 90% of the ride has been spectacular so always just put up with a little bit of bullshit like this It's in like a little shopping mall and there's nowhere I'm even put bike outside. So, home first, get changed, quick shower, dump the bike, and then we'll walk into town and uh, I'll show you a little bit of the centre of town. First thing, up the steps. I've only been here, I think this is my third day. I've been up these steps so many times. Little restaurant I did eat in, quite hideous. <laughs> A few more steps, and then we'll be. This takes us a sort of shortcut into the middle of town, and then it's about a five minute walk to the restaurant. It is just very busy here, there's a lot of people, a lot of traffic. I mean, this is kind of very much downtown, so maybe not surprising, but it does just feel very busy. Anyway, we've got to cross this road, cut through the market, and then we're going to a place called Heaven on Earth. And believe me, it has been. I've eaten there. I had lunch and dinner there yesterday. <laughs> and I'd probably do the same today and tomorrow. So we've got to go into this little mall. You can perhaps see why I didn't want to leave my bike outside. <laughs> Even with a lot. No way. Thailand the same. So 
so the setting of this restaurant leaves a lot to be desired. It's not very exciting. However, the food is very good. It's basically uh, various prepared dishes and you, you get rice and then choose two or three from today's selection. And there's the selection. I'm going to have those meatballs and pumpkin maybe and some beans. I'll go for the triple. Here it is. Red rice, peaberry rice, some sort of gluten-y meatballs. I've had those before. I had the beans before as well. And then squash with green beans and tofu. It is very good and it's the best food I've had in the Philippines so far, which is why I keep coming back. Bananas. Back down the steps and home for a rest. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. I certainly did. My first ride in Baguio definitely won't be the last. So, we'll see you soon on today's ride. <laughs>